Hallo und willkommen. Ich bin Meister Lehnse and you're watching Get Germanized. German words that have almost been forgotten. Part 6. In this educational series we look at German words that have almost been, well, made extinct. And we will try to prevent this by reviving them and putting them back into everyday language. At least that was the idea. Let us see if we can do it and I would say let us get started right away. Lasst uns anfangen. Ah, ich weiß. First up, Beelzebub. If you know this word, maybe from a TikTok trend, well, no surprise, it comes from Germany. Beelzebub is the devil. In Old Testament, the term Beelzebub, there, Beelzebul, is mentioned for the first time as a paraphrase for evil. Originally, this term, which comes from Hebrew, meant, well, Lord of the Flies or Lord of the Dunghill. Next up is die Lümmeltüte, a rather naughty word, die Lümmeltüte. Hmm, what could that mean? Die Lümmeltüte. Well, it does mean, sorry for the language, the scumbag or rubber, well, a condom. Although the origin of the term is not 100% clear, uh, well, the most persistent assumption is that it originated during the First World War. Die Lümmeltüte. <laughs> Would you use that? Uh, do you maybe think in English it doesn't matter, even if it's naughty, because no one understands it. So might you use Lümmeltüte now instead of condom? Let me know in the comments below. Next up is a rather stunning uh, hairstyle. Der Vokuhila, the Mullet, shorthand for describing a particular hairstyle. Vorne kurz, hinten lang. Short in the front, long in the back. The mullet or the Vokuhila is an acronym of the hairstyle so popular in the 80s in which the main hair was short and, well, cut in a hedgehog shape while the neck hair reached the shoulder. Ah, oh, isn't that beautiful? The fringe that was pulled into the forehead was also very important. Don't forget about the fringe. Ha, ah, Vokuhila. Would you, would you get that hairstyle again? Let me know in the comments below. The next word is rather mean, but also fun to say. Die Wuchtbrumme means full figure. The word Wuchtbrumme was created in the 60s from the composition of Wucht, which means force, and Brumme from Brummen, aka buzzing. The latter being another word for bumblebee, for example. Die Wuchtbrumme. Ah, rather mean, but fun. The next term is Vatermörder. Der Vatermörder sounds rather grueling. The father murder, basically, or murderer. The Vatermörder was a stand-up collar in the 19th century, which was placed under a neckband and provided the typical masculine appearance. Der Vatermörder. <laughs> Who came up with that and why? I don't get it. Next up is die Junior-Tüte. The junior bag. You might remember this if you have lived through, well, sometimes between the 80s and 2000s in Germany, maybe even longer than that. Die Junior Tüte, uh, the junior bag, is of course the children's menu from a well known fast food chain with a golden M in its name. Admittedly, Junior Tüte is not exactly an example for a sophisticated word culture, but nevertheless, it is, in fact, a word that shaped a certain generation and has, well, since disappeared altogether, almost at least. Our next word in the list is der Blaustrumpf, the blue stocking. A derogatory term for women in the 19th century who were considered, well, unfeminine because of their, let's say, education and attitudes. Der Blaustrumpf. Personally, I've never heard or used this word before, well, at least not before this video and before I did my research. But anyway, der Blaustrumpf. Next up is another one of those. Der Heiermann. Der Heiermann. The five mark piece. The word Heiermann, which was particularly well known in northern Germany. This is actually where I am, so I don't know why I don't know this. Well, this was the common name for the five mark piece. I remember using a five mark piece for a Coca-Cola machine. Particularly a five mark piece. That was quite expensive, I thought, at least when I was young. Der Heiermann. Next up, another favorite of mine, uh, Klimbim. Klimbim. <laughs> Fun to say, and it means clutter, so useless stuff. The origin and development of the term Klimbim unfortunately cannot be traced exactly. 
What is certain, however, is that it was kind of a buzzword of the 70s, Klimbim, so popular at the time that a television program was even named after it. And next on Klimbim, look at Joey's pants. Whoa! The next word is der feine Pinkel, the fine P, <laughs> oh, oh, well, almost. A, a term for someone who thinks that he is something better, or she is something better, or they are something better. The fine P originated in Berlin toward the end of the 19th century. At that time, it meant members of the upper social class who appeared arrogant and unpleasant to the ordinary citizen. Der feine Pinkel. Well, uh, might be because of their behavior, who knows. Um, those feine Pinkel, <laughs> with their feine clothing, yeah. Our next term is die grüne Witwe, the green widow. It referred to a lonely wife who was tied to the farm and house during the day when her husband was at work and had hardly any social contacts. So her husband was alive but she didn't see him ever and she had to do all the work and then when he got home he was tired and she was left as die grüne Witwe. Unbelievably sad story. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. The next term is for all my coffee lovers out there, der Muckefuck. <laughs> Muckefuck, not Mucky f***. Muckefuck, der Muckefuck. Muckefuck refers to a coffee substitute drink brewed from various types of grains. In times when it was impossible to get real coffee beans, the substitute coffee was very popular and it was called Muckefuck. <laughs> ah, Muckefuck, I, I love me normal coffee, but I love me Muckefuck as well. Here's a free bonus word for you, by the way, if you haven't expected it, well, here it is. Der Zornbinkel or Zorngickel. Easily angered and shouting person, in most cases a small child. The Zornbinkel was mainly known in Austria and Bavaria, where he was a mischief maker. In Hessian, one speaks of the Zorngickel. Ah, Zorngickel. Did you know this word? And would you use any of these words in this video, uh, in real life? Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't yet. Activate the bell if you want, so you would never, ever, hopefully at least, miss another video of mine. I publish new videos every Saturday evening at 6 p.m. Germany time. And I would say apart from that, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to get Germanized. Goodbye and auf Wiedersehen.